For me. All right, well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to My Father's Milk House. I'd like to uh, welcome some new viewers and uh, a few surprises in my life. I was blessed with a friend of mine seeking out my blood relatives. I was adopted as a child, and a friend of mine recently volunteered to do some, uh, do some sleuthing. And lo and behold, the family has arrived, so I just want to welcome you guys to my little um, Bible study here where I try to take biblical principles, break small chunks off, and encourage people to, you know, open their Bibles again and look at them without the, the burdens of denominational and dogma and, and theological uh, burdens and uh, draw near to their Father and the Son through the Holy Spirit, right? I've been working a lot of weird hours lately. I've, we've had some strange snowfalls, and Maisie has been neglected. Thankfully, again, I have a calf, so she is getting attended to by him. But a lot of times I lose a lot of volume when this happens. And this time, like if you watch some of my previous videos when I haven't... Hey, babe, can you grab another chalk? I guess I could have grabbed it. And now we are over a gallon. We're at a gallon and a half. Not, not quite a gallon and a half. Okay, five quarts. In the last few videos I've been focusing on 1 Peter 2.2, 2, which is, uh, let me just read that. Therefore putting aside all malice, guile, and hypocrisy, envy, and slander, like newborn babes long for the pure milk of the word, that by it you will have grown into deliverance if you have tasted the kindness of Yahweh. The first thing we have to understand is you need to put aside a bunch of stuff. You need to set aside the stuff that's in your way. Um, you know, malice and guile, hypocrisy and envy and slander. We've all been envious. We've all been hypocrites. Um, we've all had some malicious intent at some point in our lives and other things. We've all seek, you know, beguile, you know, that's what I believe to lie or to deceive, right? Beguile. All deception. A lot of times, uh, the deception is something that we uh, choose to put ourselves under and it gets in the way of the truth of the scriptures. You know, some dogmatic approaches to God where you put something like man's traditions, right? We're supposed to stay away from man's traditions and stick with Yahweh's traditions. And part of my, a big part of my testimony, and I, I think in, in the, one of these upcoming episodes, I'm going to just simply give my testimony and just title it my testimony so that people can see kind of where I came from and, you know, the whole process of how I got here. Just to clarify, I believe Jesus is God. You know, he is Elohim, Son of God. He prays to the Father. We approach the Father boldly through the throne of grace, through our, through our Savior and High Priest, Lord Jesus Christ. Right? I refer to him as Yeshua or Yehushua, depending on who I'm speaking with, because that's more close to his uh, written name in here. Because, uh, of course, they didn't have a J for several hundred years. Um, I'm not a sacred namer, so I don't think there's a problem with saying Jesus Christ. I just like the old ways. Uh, that's actually how I've, you know, in the process of my walk through faithfulness in, in the Father and the Son and the Word of God, my wife and I have sought to just kind of peel away the layers of things and just try to walk as a Peter might have walked or Paul might have walked or Stephen might have walked. So that's our thing. But the Word of God is 
you know, what the Bereans looked at when Paul was sending out his circulars, you know, the letter to the Ephesians wasn't really to the Ephesians. It was a circular that was supposed to be sent to all the churches. Uh, whatever, we'll go into that in a different time. And then, um, but he constantly and continuously was reminding them of the word, reminding them of the word. When the Bereans were investigating him for what he was telling was truth, they were going to the word of God. The word of God is defined as the law of God, the commandments of God, the Torah, you know, and then even the prophets of God, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Micah, you know, Habakkuk, all them guys were reminding them to go back to the word. Yahweh was a man of certain words, and then he expected us to walk by faithfulness to those words, and then he would show us this amazing things that we couldn't possibly know without it. So Paul, again, like Isaiah, Paul, again, like Jeremiah, Paul, again, like any of the others, has been sent to the nations, the Gentiles. And the word Gentile means, if you get to the basics of it, those who were cast off. They were cast out. They were the ten tribes of Israel. They became the nations through their idolatry. We are the tribes. And that was one thing, uh, one of the inquiries on one of my videos was that he said, we are not Israel. Everything that I read has been about Israel. I'm, you know, we are the church, yada, yada, yada. And then even in, even in 1 Peter, um, he's like, in 1 Peter, an emissary of Yeshua, the anointed one to the chosen, aliens among the dispersion of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of the Almighty Father in connection to be made by the Holy to be made holy, to be made set apart by the Spirit with respect to obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yeshua the Anointed, loving kindness to you and peace be multiplied. And he's like, see, you know, he, he, he's almost questioning the letter. We are the scattered tribes, people. When Jesus came, he said, I come for what? Nothing but what? The lost sheep of Israel. So if Jesus is our personal Savior, and Jesus died for our personal sins, and for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth or pledge faithfulness to the Son of God, we should at this time have everlasting, we have not, we will not perish, but have everlasting life. Who are we? So Jesus came for the lost tribes of Israel, which are the mixed multitudes that left Egypt, there is no difference. The mixed multitudes were promised to Abraham. Father of the nation. He took Abraham out of the nations. He rejected all the rest of the nations because of the Babylon. He took Abraham. He took him on a big walk, promised him all this stuff, made a covenant, made a blood covenant, made a death uh, addendum in the blood covenant. But then... Many things happened. Israel was lost. Jesus came. He said, I come for the lost tribes of Israel. So again, if we are married to Jesus, believe in Jesus, follow Jesus, love Jesus with all our hearts, believe his words, and we are now on this journey to follow him, we are the lost tribes of Israel. Because we're just a mixed multitude. There's no magical thing. Right? There's no Jew, there's no Greek. You are either grafted into Jesus in the nation of Israel, which is Jacob, right? Jacob wasn't a Jew, he was Israel. He literally was named Israel by God, right? So we've got Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They followed Yahweh's word, command. They loved him. They built wells to evangelize with water, to name him. So here we are, thousands and thousands of years at the end of the line over here, trying to look backwards in time at the writings and trying to establish how we can know that we love God and it's the true God and that He loves us. And it's right here. 
Any Bible that you pick up will, will give you Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy pretty accurately. All right? I guess that's, that's all I got for now is, remember, if you want to be like a newborn baby, newborn babies crave pure milk. You ever try to give a, you ever seen that videos on TikTok where they give a baby a lemon? And he's just like, ugh, right? And I'm sure that'd be the same thing if you try to give a baby sour milk or whatever. But for some reason, parents think it's funny to give their baby a lemon. That's subjective. I'm not here to argue with you. But a newborn baby knows what pure milk is, right? It'll crave it. And if it's soured or something, it doesn't like it. We need to be like that. We need to, we, we don't need to know every single false doctrine because that you can lose your mind. There's 30,000 denominations of Christianity alone. 30,000 Protestant denominations. You can't know every precept of every denomination, right? You lose your mind. Never mind all the other religions. There's 70 nations with thousands and thousands of ways to worship a deity. Our job is to long for the pure milk of the word, and the word is the words that are spoken by Yahweh, and they're referred to by Jesus, and then grow into deliverance, right? Don't be afraid of words. Learn them. Your father is gracious and kind and merciful. He's gracious in that he's loving and kind. And you can grow in merited favor of grace. Okay? He's merciful in that when you fall, when you get stuck in ditches, and when I was telling a buddy of mine, say you know how you get your boot stuck, and you maybe even lose your boot, lose your sock, you're miserable, and you're yanking it out, you're sitting in the water, and you're just like, down. Guess who's the most merciful God? Ours. So he comes and he finds you. Even if you're sitting there with your boot in the water for 20 years, he comes and finds you. Moses took 40 years. And even then he was kicking and screaming. Moses didn't run into Egypt to try to save the Israelites. He was dragged kicking and screaming and being bribed and caught, cajoled, and all this other stuff by God. Why didn't God just, you know, send him off and pick Aaron? Because Yahweh is loving and merciful and willing to take the small and faithful over the strong and proud. So, have a great day. Crave the pure milk of the word that you'll grow into deliverance. Don't be afraid to fall. And if you've tasted the kindness of Yahweh, then you know it's pure milk. So, I'd like to welcome my family to these messages. I know you're checking me out. Um, I use several different Bibles. Uh, this one is from my great-grandpa, my adopted, my family. And he, my great-great-grandpa was a pastor, and he built churches in Wisconsin, and he was a primitive Methodist, and he gave this Bible in 1892 to my great-grandfather, who uh, was a businessman, and um, so uh, I hear I come from a line of different types of faiths, and I'm super excited about that, so I just want to thank you again for coming to find me and wanting to uh, add me into your world and my wife and I are just super excited and uh, quite honestly we were even kind of like looking at campers this morning too because we figured we might have to go on a uh, family fi family finding fun tour sometime so uh, love you all and I thank you brothers and sisters for coming here and uh, checking this out and um, even if you agree, you know whatever agree or disagree leave a comment uh, I love challenges, and I just want to get to the very basic bottom of God's perfect truth so that we can walk in it. And I don't... So, all right, have a blessed day, and I will see you on the next one. And I think, yeah, I think I'm going to be doing my testimony probably on the next one. Adios.